Welcome back. Will Robinson here from Robinson's Auto Tools and Time.com. Back again with this Ford F350 Super Duty Lariat. Beautiful truck with the 6.7 diesel. And we're going to be chasing down the next coat. You remember this vehicle? We just got done chasing down the P20BD for the reducting heater, circuit B. And we found out which one that was, confirmed the issue. That one is resolved and everything's going well. Now we have a P026A. Charge air cooler efficiency under threshold. One thing I did learn from this vehicle is that the customer stated he had to add antifreeze into the smaller reservoir. So I would call that like the secondary cooling system on these. It has an intercooler, its own reservoir, which does other things as well. However, it's low on fluid, but there's no external leaks. Um, I looked it over quickly. It's been parked in my garage while we were fixing that reducting heater line, replacing that injection line for the DEF fluid. And still, everything is dry. Um, it's a little low on fluid right now, but he said that he topped it off. But he topped it off, and it's already low. So we're going to have to dig in there and see if we could find this issue. So without further ado, let's jump in there and take a peek at what sometimes could be a common problem and it's very unfortunate. Alright, since this is going to be a couple hour job and I have a pretty good idea of what it might be, instead of getting the vehicle hot and monitor and everything, we're just going to take a quick look. I'll just put a light down there. You can see it is already low and he said he just topped it off. There is no external leaks, you gotta take my word for that. I looked over everything. So what I'm gonna do next, if it's not leaking externally, you gotta make sure it's not leaking internally, right? So, right next to your battery resides the intercooler. So we gotta make sure it's not leaking internally since we can't find an external leak. So I'm gonna take the upper hose that goes to the intake, uh, has a retaining clip, and then we'll pull this hose clamp, loosen everything up, and pop that hose off and look inside. Alright, hopefully you guys can see me well. I can do most of this with a flathead screwdriver. Take and we'll loosen up this hose clamp. Get it nice and loose that. That way it's not fighting you. We've got this little clip here. Usually you can just get underneath it. Sometimes you gotta push in a little bit. Just maybe being apart. Get that a little push in. There you go. Sometimes I take these clips all the way out. So, now I'll pop this clamp. Oh, yeah. Not sure if you guys can see that. Not sure in the that's where the leak's at, internal. Let me show you. Give you guys a better look down in here. As you can see, it's pretty obvious that the intercooler or something, 90% sure, 99% sure it's the intercooler, leaking internally, so we could pressure test it. I'm going to start yanking it. Uh, I will verify it once it's out of the vehicle. But this is a Unfortunately, expensive, more common problem on these. So we're gonna take and suck some of the coolant out. Um, both reservoirs, because I'm gonna have to remove the upper hose to get the cooler out. We're gonna also have to remove the battery. All right, first I'm gonna start by sucking some fluid out of the main 
main expansion tank, the reservoir. Yeah, I feel pretty good we got that. Low enough. We're gonna come over here, we're gonna suck the reservoir for the secondary cooling system as well. Get that emptied out. Hopefully that's low enough. I don't want to affect me too much over here. The upper hose is lower than that upper hose, so if anything, I can pull that top hose off and suck it out because I can't get into the into this reservoir. Okay, next we're going to start with the obvious. Um, everything that's in the way of removing the cooler from the vehicle, upper hose, um, a little heater hose uh, for the expansion tank. We're going to take, we'll start with that, pop this off, just a pair of pliers, pull the clamp back, give her a nice little twisty twist, and pull straight back. Um, get that out of the way. Um, this hose here has like a little push connector, two, two blue tabs on there, hopefully you can see them. Uh, you just take and you push them together. Alright, so after that we're going to take and Pop the upper hose, use a screwdriver, get behind this clip like so. These ones are pretty, pretty much self-explanatory, just go up until they clip. And then you should be able to pop this hose out. Once again, there is an O-ring in there. So it might be a little, a little finicky, but this stuff's all plastic. And um, you gotta be careful. Look at that, nice and dry. So sucking that reservoir out will get you nice and dry. Um, instead of manipulating this hose and bending it around, let me see what's holding it up front here. Pull it back. It's the same exact style clip. And at that point, we'll just remove, the, remove it from the vehicle. There's really no set order to do this in. Um, except for taking the fluid out first. You're gonna definitely want to do that. But next I'm gonna take this upper hose off of the inner cooler. And I'm just using a pair of channel locks. It's a squeeze clamp just like we had up here. Yeah, there you go. That goes up there pretty far, guys. Try to give it a twist. It's gonna leak out a little bit until I get it going. But so what I'm gonna do is try to make as little mess as possible so I get this in here. I'm gonna start sucking right away. So again, like I mentioned earlier guys, I I emptied that fluid extractor before starting on this job. It holds 2.7 gallons almost three gallons and it's just about full. See this one little hose here at the bottom? Hopefully you guys can see it. Well, it's got another one of those squeeze clamps. I might, I might take that off just so I'm not manipulating the plastic. Um, Cause it is Saturday and there's very little places to get parts right now. Yeah, that's weird. All right, next we got this 11 millimeter, it's a clamp. We're gonna take that off. Get that nice and loose. Yeah, that one goes back to the turbo. Um, another one of those clamps. I'm gonna see if I can pop it up easy enough. Different because I think it's locked in. Alright, then once you have that back clip pop, take and remove the hose. Alright, I just want to show you. And on this side of the cooler, there's no coolant. You come on this side of the cooler, you got coolant, so it's coming from 
the cooler. Um, I'm going to take and remove or unplug that electrical connection. As you see, I already pulled out that little retaining clip. Push down, unplug, get this connector out of your way. There's a little coolant hose here. You got to push this. There's two gray tabs, one on the bottom, one on the top. You squeeze them in and then wiggle out the hose. As you see, it's starting to come. Got her. More coolant running down. All right, next I'll be removing the battery. Someone has some aftermarket stuff here. I'm gonna have to cut these zip ties for now. I'll redo it later. Just give us enough room to pick the battery up and out. Because these wires here are pretty rigid. On this side, eight millimeter. All right, then we have a ten millimeter here. There's retaining bracket. It's pretty straightforward. It's a battery holder. Take a remove bolt it is. Remove this bracket. Okay. Should be able to pick this bad boy up and out at this point. A little heavy. Mm -hmm. All right, all that so we get to this one 13 millimeter retaining bolt. And we got one more right here. Ford OEM replacement. All right, to reinstall it, I decided to leave this lower hose off just to just remember. Otherwise, I got to remove this this hose, and it made it a little bit cumbersome to get out. Um, there's one little plastic clip. Yeah, switch over. You just gotta pop it off the old one. Uh, just a little screwdriver pick behind there. Pull it up out. Pop it onto this one. Everything else comes with the OEM degrommet, um, this retaining bracket where it, where it goes down. Um, it's almost like the battery tray it'll latch into down there. So, all right. All right, so it's a lot easier to get in there without that hose on there. So, remember that, guys. For the record. Come on. Screw back here. I'm not sure if you see that or not. I'm just gonna get all my retainer screws started for now. Just to hold me in place. Right. Everything looks good. Pop that lower hose on, but I don't have it tight, so I'm not sure the orientation that it gives in. So I'm gonna hook up my heater hose. Make sure everything goes together good. Okay, that feels good. Put this top one on there. I think 
find the old spot and I tend to like put them, put them back in their old position. Just a matter of preference. Don't want to figure out this electrical connection. I'm going to plug that in right away while I'm here. That way it's done. Not forgotten about. Next I'm going to install this upper hose. Inspect your hoses, make sure nothing's torn or everything while you're here. Make sure it's all good. Might be a little bit of a bear to clip on, but we'll get everything started first and then I'll, I'll work on getting this clip. Looks like you got it. As long as you have your your um, retaining clip in the right orientation. It'll, it'll push on that for you and latch. Let's make sure everything's latched on because that hose will blow off if you don't have it right. Mark my words. That feels good. Run it down close. So let's get this upper hose on. That way I can tighten up the lower clamp before I move forward. Put the hose on first. And once again, I can't stress it enough, inspect all your hoses because if you have a boost leak, you might as well find it now. Sounds like that latched in there good. Um, nice neutral positions right there. Okay, it's tight. Probably check this one even though I didn't. Not have it off. Yeah, everything looks good. I'll tighten that up. So you can get in there with a nice long extension. Okay. Good, good and tight. Alright, next. Let me hook this back up. Uh, And I tell you what, next I'm just going to put the battery in because I don't have the thermostat yet. And I'm going to give you a shot why I'm going to change the thermostat. I figure I'll just hook these up later. Um, that way it's a nice straight shot and then I, I could just put everything back together the way it's supposed to go. Not worry too much about it and then I'll just plug the, the hoses in. And I'll give you a shot of that later. But for now, let's put the battery in it. That way we're one step further. Next, I just want to take my hand ratchet and double check. Everything here. I hate when people put aftermarket stuff on it. It just turns me off, to be honest with you. Close. Get this battery in. Uh huh. Actually, this one here, I almost forgot. 
This one has to hold. This bracket on for us. So taking that, take and tighten that up. Good. Put that down, put that down. We'll get some zip ties. So this is why I gotta run out and get a thermostat. If you look down in there, looks like something's coming apart and there's like a piece of rubber stuck in that thermostat. This is like a dual thermostat on this one. So, not sure if that came from somewhere or, or what. However, we're going to replace that for him. That's just one, two, three retaining bolts holding that housing down. We already have the coolant drained, so we might as well take care of that. We have the thermostat removed. You can see the seat is coming apart and couldn't have been working too efficiently, if you ask me. So we got the new thermostat. We're gonna pop that in there. We're gonna put it in the same way we found it. See, it has like a 194 and a 201B. So 194 was facing that way. So I'm gonna put this the same way as I found it. Alright, I know you guys can't really see down in there, but I'm just gonna pop that new thermostat in there like so. these OEM parts, man. Yeah, sometimes you got to wonder. Every wow. place I look, I'm finding something. This truck isn't that old. Well, like I say, when you consider the fact that most of them OEM parts are made on the same lines as the ones that they claim are OEM. Right. <laughs> and they just put them in two different boxes. <laughs> and private label, and they call that, right? Yeah. They're all made in Taiwan or Thailand or China or yeah, something. Got a ratchet somewhere. Right on the floor. Yeah, some... <clears throat> there you go. Torch back for this. You need a torch back? Yeah, if you don't mind. Next for the upper hose, let's pop the clips back down in place. And when you go to 
pushed this in, push it to the clips, wipe off any residual. Same thing up here. Push that down to the clips. Now at this point, we simply hook this back together. Alright, we got this reservoir hose. See where that goes. A pair of pliers. CD. And then there, like so. All right, give everything a look see and make sure you have everything tight. We can top it up with antifreeze now. Essentially, I'm going to fill everything up to the full marks, and then we'll start it up and let it run for a little bit. And we'll start checking for leaks. We emptied the um, extractor before I started. Right. And I filled it up. Yeah. Two and a half, 2.7 gallons. Okay. And now. Okay, now we're all topped off. We're going to. Started for the first time. Pretty sure I got everything. I'm back to the shop. Everything's looking good. Um, I got the Ford IDS hooked up to. Emergency brake is set because we are going to perform a manual DPF regeneration process on it. And since we had some stuff going in that intake and whatnot, I just want to make sure this thing has optimal performance to the best of its ability that I could get it before I hand it back to the customer. So we're going to Take it through its steps here and pretty much I'm just following the procedures as it tells me to. At this time the fans are running full wide open, it sounds like it's a runaway diesel. 